take him out. It is because of the way we have held onto our tradition, our norms, which we cherish most. And so therefore, to get the retinue of chiefs for this uh, occasion is not surprising at all. It is not. And we are so colorful in the way we do our things. And that is why people always are Ghanaians are different. And indeed, we are different. Thank you, Jyoti. Um, there's been a lot of conversation about chiefs and queen mothers and sort of uh, we continue to talk about tradition, but we also live in a very modern Ghana. So how, apart from these incredibly colorful ceremonies, how is it possible to marry what it is that is good about our traditions and the modern society that we seek to create? It's interesting you say that because Togbia Fede, who is on our screen now, is a modern chief. and. We know, we know that he has been very dynamic in changing the lives of his people, in the creation of businesses, and in making sure that chieftaincy is brought from the, the, the tradition into modernity. So he's one chief who has proved that you can be a traditional ruler and yet you a can live businessman. absolutely, you know, and that's, that is the same for most of our chiefs now. Uh, some of them are young, educated, uh, they come to the job with uh, a lot of um, business acumen. And so for me, it's, it's, it's critical that chiefs... Uh, 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 well, not a chief, but of course, it's Dr. Edward Mahama, um, former, well, uh, PNC candidate. Um, he contested in 2016, yes. 2012. I mean, this is who you would call a veteran politician. He's also a doctor. He is a doctor as well. A medical doctor. So he's also taking his seat. So apart from the chiefs, apart from the diplomats, apart from the ministers, and of course the people from the security services, you are seeing people in the stands. I mean, this is wall to wall, literally. People in the stands and media all over the place. Colonel, you, I was putting you on the spot and asking you, the three things that you would like the president-elect to change, from your perspective, what should be the three media things that you want him to work on? I think first of all, he should have a listener year. The National should House have a listener of year. Chiefs. People are so expectant of his delivery that I expect him to have a listening ear once more and listen to the people's needs and the agency of them and try and fix them as much as he can. So that's the first thing you want, for him to have a listening ear. But there are 25 million people in Ghana, so who's he to listen to? His Excellency um, High Commissioner, British High Commissioner, just walked in, Mr. John Benjamin, and behind him was the Honorable Adam Zafri, a Member of Parliament from the UK um, Legislature. There are a number of people who are going to be coming through. JOT, can you take us through a little bit about where you expect the ceremony to go? Of course, there's always some changes, but there are some things that will not change. The Chief Justice, the swearing in. Can you take us through a little bit of that? Okay, let's not forget. Let's not forget that this is, oh, uh, Parliament, but on your screen is uh, Bishop Doug Heward Mills and his wife, uh, Adelaide Heward Mills, of the Lighthouse Chapel International, one of the biggest churches in Ghana. But let's not forget that this is Parliament. Parliament is moving from Parliament House, the State House, to the Independence Square. So all the proceedings will be parliamentary proceedings. From the time the Speaker comes in, uh, with the clerk, uh, to the parliamentarians, all of that will be based on parliamentary proceedings. So it's not going to be different from when Parliament is in session. So that's something we need to um, we need to uh, uh, to get get right. It's Parliament at uh, Independence Square. And now, of course, the president of Liberia, President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. She's just arrived. Um, Liberia is a member of ECOWAS, a member of the Mano River Union. 
um, President Salib, of course, has been to Ghana several times, and uh, she joins us again today. We are live on Ghana television. I'm with Colonel Comfort and Komadansu and John Osejichajman. John Osejichajman, you've um, you've shared some views on what you think the order of proceedings are going to be. But um, Colonel, I'm going to come to you as this is Ellen Johnson Salib. Um, She's an inspiration to a lot of women across Africa, across Ghana. Again, let me put you on the spot. Is it important to have a female president? Is it ever going to happen in Ghana? Does it make a difference? On the screen, of course, um, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, president of Liberia. It is very important to have a woman president. Why not? And if Ghana were to have a female president, all the better for the women. I suppose. For the women, no, for of the course. country. No, for the women first. <laughs> for the women first. I'm so proud when I when I see uh, Mrs. Selluv Johnson for being the first female president in Africa. She's so, also chair of ECOWAS. I yeah, she's, she's the chair chairman of ECOWAS, of ECOWAS. At the moment. And just just gone past was Archbishop Will, uh, Duncan Williams uh, and his wife uh, on on your screen right there. Uh, one of the stalwarts, uh, should I say, in uh, the Christian faith in this country. Well, he's certainly very noticeable and colourful, yes, if that's what you mean. We are live on Ghana Television from the Independent Square. We are waiting or awaiting the arrival of President-elect Nanada Dankwa Ekufuado shortly. Um, Ghana Television will be uh, providing you with essentially a drive-by with I believe the camera people are stationed outside of his residence and will be coming in with the president-elect. The president-elect is an Anglican. He tries to attend Mass, he says, every morning at 7 a.m. on Sunday. It doesn't matter where he is in the world. He loves football. He actually was considering becoming a professional football player. He's also like squash. Um, he likes to dance, and apparently his favorite Ghanaian, some of his favorite high-life artists are Amachi Dede and Daddy Lumba. He likes to watch movies, loves cricket, reads a lot. And his favorite dish, well, one of them, yam and corn beef stew. Local <laughs> boy. Local boy. He was educated at the University of Ghana, has a bachelor's in economics, 1967. He was called um, to the English bar, Middle Temple, in 1971, and to the Ghanaian bar in 1974. He's married to Rebecca, and they have five daughters and three grandchildren. So this is the personal data on the president. But I think it'll be very useful also, JOT, to look at the vice president, who he is, and what does he bring to the table. The vice president, of course, vice Vice President-elect um, Alaji, Dr. Mahamadou Baumia. Well, Dr. Mahamadou Baumia uh, is what I would like to say uh, one of the revelations of, of this country ever since Nana Kufuado chose him in 2008 to be his uh, um, vice presidential candidate. Uh, in, twin, in 2001, Baumia was appointed resident representative of the African Development Bank for Zim Zimbabwe by the ADB. He served in this position until reappointment uh, as a vice presidential candidate to Nana Akufuado on the ticket of the MPP for Ghana's 2012 presidential election. He's of royal stock. His father, Alaji Mumuni Baumia, was paramount chief founding father of the Northern People's Party. And you, it will interest you to note that the Northern People's Party is one of the political parties that the MPP uh, traces its history from. Uh, so you have, the, that's what we call the Dombu tradition. And Balmer's father was one of the founding fathers of the Northern People's Party. Um, I believe, and uh, now live on your screen, Jana Television, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. The Chief Justice plays a central role today. Um, she will be swearing in Chief Justice of Ghana, her ladyship, Justice Wood, has arrived. And you also see on your screen former Member of Parliament um, and a former Minister. We've moved on, but the Chief Justice of Ghana has arrived. We see other members, um, Papa 
Uswankama, very well known member of parliament also on the screens. So it's all happening. It's all happening live. Papa Uswankama is just walking in and the pomp and the ceremony continues live here on Ghana television across the country. We were talking a little bit about um, Baumia, um, soon to be the vice president, uh, soon to be sworn in as the vice president of the Republic of Ghana. And one of the little known facts is that his mother, mother. Hajia Mariama Bawamia, was one of the first female students from northern Ghana to gain admission to Wesley Girls High School. So the women have made the men and the women are leading in this. Colonel, I come back to you <laughs> on that note. I say go girl, <laughs> go girl. Uh, indeed, and, and a first class. Before you come in, just to re emphasize, of course, you can see um, on your screens the Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana and the Justices of the Supreme Court. And we also see Professor Nabila from the National House of Chiefs. National House of Chiefs, former president of the National House of Chiefs. The noise level, I mean, it is amazing here today. We will keep taking you through the commentary, but I think sometimes the pictures speak a thousand words. So you see in front of you the pageantry that is associated with the inauguration of the president, the arrival of the first female Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana. And Nanaya, it's this symbolizes that time is almost up for the swearing in. As soon as you see the justices of the Supreme Court, then it means that very soon we are going to see the arrival of the former president, we're going to see the arrival of the parliamentarians, and then the arrival of the vice president elect. After which, the last person to arrive will be the president elect. And once he does so, parliament will take over. Absolutely. And as you said, there is a time and an order to these things. The order of proceedings, you have outlined it for us. So it's important that the justices are seated. And then afterwards come the legislature. Of course, in a democracy, you have different wings of government. We have the executive that has to be sworn in. And I think it's important. It is the judiciary that swears in the executive. But it is the speaker who also invites the chief justice to swear in the executive. So you see, and of course it's the media, the fourth estate that tells and the brings story. The, the story to you. So all of Ghana, or at least the formal elements of Ghana, including the chiefs, including many representations of ministers and parliamentarians, business people, ordinary people who flocked here since three o'clock. This is Ghana and it's happening live from the Black Star Square. The swearing in and inauguration of the fifth president of the Fourth Republic of Ghana, Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado, and his vice president, Dr. Alhaji Baumia, will be taking place very soon. As, as I was saying, Alhaji Mahmoud Baumia earned a first class honors degree in economics at Be Be Buckingham University in 1987, a master's degree in economics in Link at Lincoln College, Oxford, and a PhD in economics from the Simon Fraser University, Vancouver, British Columbia, in Canada in 1995. A published author, it was Dr. Baumia who, through his appearance at the Supreme Court hearing of the MPP election petition, demystified the whole process of voting and subsequent tallying of votes and declaration of results. I believe what you were seeing is the arrival of the Chinese ambassador, a delegation from the Chinese embassy has arrived. Um, we have a number of female ambassadors in Ghana, actually. I believe we have 20 or 21 of them. And the Chinese ambassador is one of the female heads of mission or ambassadors in Ghana. Um, when the um, Chief Justice was walking in, there was a fairly long procession of um, justices with her. Um, and we can tell you a little bit about who some of the people in the procession would have been. 
The Chief Justice is on the screen at the moment. Um, in the procession with her would have been, I saw Justice Sophia Ekufu. Um, she has been um, with, I beg your pardon, Justice Sophia Kufu, Justice Victor Jones, Maulam Doche as well. He was appointed in June 2008. He's also a member of the Supreme Court of the Gambia. I believe we have representation from the Gambia, but not its, um, it not uh, Yaya Jama, perhaps not. No, what Yaya Jama is not here today. <laughs> but just let me say that that procession was the, was the justices of the Supreme Court and the justice of the Appeal Court. They came in together and they were led by the Chief Justice. Incidentally, she retires this year in June. So this will be, be her the last- Chief Justice yes, this, this will be her last swearing in. Uh, so- She was appointed, of course, in June 2007 after she'd been called to the bar. It's very interesting. I didn't know this about her, that she'd first worked in the police service- She's a police officer. As a deputy superintendent. Absolutely. a police officer. And a public prosecutor for three years. But I didn't know this, how fascinating. So she assumed office on the 15th June 2007. 2007. She has, as you pointed out, sworn in three precedents. Absolutely. Um, the late president, John Evans, at her mills in January 2009. Then Vice President John Dramani Mahama, when President Mills died, she swore him in on 24th July 2012. And then President-elect John Dramani Mahama in December 2012. Um, and now, as she's about to retire, she swears in another president or president-elect, Nanada Dankwe Kufuado. Fascinating fellow, Bugri Nabu, is who you saw briefly on the screen. Colonel, can you take us through a little bit of your impressions of sitting up here, because we're literally sitting under the arch, looking down. What does it feel, look and sound like to you? It is refreshing. It is refreshing because the ambience of the audience is, is, is exciting and it, it gives you, it gives one a sense of hope and expectation. And we are with the audience because we are part of the audience as, as we speak. And we feel the, 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 the kind of passion falls on us as well. Well, we just saw uh, Chairman Woon to me or Chairman Ntribu Esiakon, the MPP Ashanti Regional Chairman, a uh, very hard-working young man who worked tirelessly in the Ashanti region for um, the MPP. So Chairman Wuntime was on the screen. Since when do you think that the Vuvuzela has become part of our tradition? Because it seems like there is a Vuvuzela craze in Ghana again today. I like to call I thought, them the Vuvuzela I thought it, Army. Yeah, I thought it was all had to do with football and not this. But we are from the Black Star. We are live at the Black Star Square on Ghana television. Awaiting the arrival um, of the Speaker of Parliament and the members of Parliament, 275 of them, the Chief Justice and the Justice. Oh, I believe that is the independent candidate he ran as, for, as an independent uh, presidential candidate, Jacob Osaya. But we just got a quick glimpse of him there. So there's a lot of cameras out. We're trying to bring you as many live pictures as possible. Um, GTV is also live on radio. But this is a very, very colorful and very loud moment here at the Black Star Square. There's a roar, if you can hear it, that has just gone up. I'm not sure who it is, but we'll tell you as soon as we know. There's, ah, there you go. Oh, there you have it. And now we explain the roar. Um, President John Dramani Mahama has just walked in. He's accompanied, he's accompanied by his wife, Mrs. Lordina Mahama. And that is the roar that we heard indeed. 
this must wow, be such an saying? interesting moment for him. Um, he's been here once, he's been here twice, and this time he hands over, he's a guest. He is a guest. Uh, well, there's not much I can say about uh, President John Dramami, but he'll be remembered by Ghanaians for a lot of, of uh, work. Dramani. Yeah, but what, what I know is that very soon his party Accompanied by is going to be the largest position in Lodina Parliament. Mahama. And Hati uh, handing over the reins of power to Manado Dankwa Akufuado. And I think it's fascinating that the crowd roared in, absolutely. Approval. in approval. So we're absolutely. absolutely excited to see um, President Mahama. And of course, we are expecting to see former President Rawlings and his wife. Mrs. Nana Kunedu Ajmang Rawlings was, of course, on her own a presidential candidate. Um, there are so many guests who are coming. I believe arriving shortly, the camera is just picking him up, is Mr. Alan Tremanting. There he is. He's a former um, minister for trade and industry, apparently uh, soon, to, re soon to, to, return to return to, to the trade and ministry. His old trade, trade and position industry ministry. As trade, and the crowd is roaring. He, of course, ran against Nanada Dankwa in the internal party. In, in the shot as well as Reverend Mate. You can see the Reverend Mate Presbyterian Church represented here today as well. So Mr. Alan Chermanting is walking in with smiles. And um, we will continue to bring you as many of the faces in the crowd um, yes. as the camera picks them up. The appointment of Minister of Trade and Industry. Well, it is rumoured because he will have to go before Parliament. So Parliament sure, will indeed. have to vet, indeed. But and they will decide ultimately. Indeed. But it is rumoured. It's a rumour. Nana actually mentioned him. Well, it is a so rumour until a rumor. Parliament says so. <laughs> indeed. Don't indeed. forget what we established: that there is an executive, there is a judiciary, there is a legislature. Okay, so if he's and lucky... And of course, in our shot is Madam Joyce Ayi. Uh, yes. Um, Madam Joyce Ayi, how does one The Ministry of Salt and... She's an inspirational light, light speaker, a mentor to many, has served in the PNDC, I believe, many years ago, um, holds several positions on boards, professional boards, um, in the private sector. Yes. And she is in the mini with the Ministry of Salt and Light. And in the shop now is Haruna Fusaini. So a number of the outgoing ministers, incoming members of parliament, well, they've come in. There are a number of people here today. We'll bring you as much as we can. You are listening live to Ghana Television, the swearing in and inauguration of the fifth president of the fourth republic of Ghana. We started talking about, uh, oh, indeed, oh vice my president, God. and here he is. We like to call him PK, <laughs> the vice president of the Republic of outgoing vice president of the Republic of Ghana, Park yes, see Anissa Arthur, uh, on your screens. Uh, and he's with his wife. And he's with okay. his wife. He's yes. And again, you hear the roar from the crowd. But the, that's actually I'm strange because the, the president came in before the vice president. Our vice president, Chrissy Beckwain, yes. Emisa Arthur. <laughs> the vice president should arrive. Accompanied by his wife, arrived. Matilda. But hey, it's one of... Vice president, Chrissy Beckwain, Emisa Arthur. Accompanied by his wife, Matilda, arriving. I believe protocol is sorting itself out. But it's interesting that you did uh -oh. point that out. It's interesting that you did point that out. And on your screen now, of course, is the first, she was the first female editor of the Daily Graphic, oh, yeah. Madame Elizabeth O'Hine, former um, minister as well. She has just walked in, Madame Elizabeth O'Hine. Yes. She is also a former uh, BBC reporter. 
she was quite an inspiration to me when I was younger. Um, I think it's one of the reasons. Oh, and of course, now another roar from the crowd. The former president of the Republic of Ghana, John Ejekum Kufour. Okay, I. Now the dignitaries are coming in thick and fast. And President Kufuor served two terms as president of the Republic of Ghana uh, from 2000, January 7, 2001 to the end of uh, his tenure in, uh, on January 6, 2009. So President Kufuor has arrived. Uh, I do not see Mrs. Kufuor, but President Kufuor most certainly is here. Yes, he's here. Um, President Mahama is here. Walking Vice towards President. his seat. Right here at the Black Star Square. And these are our guests. This is our day. And pretty much everything is going according to plan. Once the, the Chief Justice arrived, we knew that everything, everything was, uh, 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 had been set in motion. So now we have the past presidents coming in. And once they come in, the next group of people who will arrive will be the parliamentarians. They will take their seats. And um, after that, we'll see uh, the Vice President-elect come in. And then we will all have the one we've been waiting for, the president-elect Nana Adodankwa Kufuadu, also arriving here at the Independence Square. Um, Colonel, previously we saw a number of chiefs from the security services. Perhaps you can tell us who is probably sitting there right now. Oh, okay. Um, Nana, we, we have uh, the chief... The Chief the of the Defense, instance, Inspector General of Police, John Kudalo. The, the John Kudalo, and who, together with the Chief of the Defense Staff, become the ADCs of the President during ceremonies. When they are the ceremonial the ADCs. ADCs. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, in, invited and, and inspected the, is the Director General of Prisons, who is Mr. Mr. Emmanuel Yao, Yao Ajato. Yao Ajato, and. Yeah, the, the Commissioner for Customs Division, Mr. John Vianney Kudamuru, and the BNI boss, Mr. Pius Awalinga, and the Chief Fire Officer, Dr. Albert Brown Gazi, and the Director of Immigration, Mr. Felix Yalsapong. Yes, so these are some of the, uh, the, the, the chiefs of the security services. This is the, the top brass of that, the security um, services we saw who came through. All right, so let's give you some history on our former presidents who are arriving. Um, after today, Ghana will have three ex-presidents, and they will be His Excellency President Jerry John Rawlins, His Excellency President John Ajakum Kufo, and His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. They will be... Um, what you see now on your screens is the South African uh, ambassador from South Africa. Ambassador of South Africa to Ghana. So as I was saying, Ghana will have three ex-presidents and um, President Kufuor uh, served as president for two terms spanning 2001 to 2009. And one of the, his biggest legacies uh, was the relaunch of the Ghanaian economy to set it on the path of sustainable growth to facilitate wealth creation. And we also have uh, His Excellency President Jerry John Rawlins, twice no. head of state, first as a military yet? We head of state. Him. Is he here yet? And second as a democratically elected civilian president. Uh, he served two terms as a civilian and he served from 1981 
to 1992. Ah, that is, I believe, the president, the president of Sierra, Sierra Leone. Leone, who is just walking in. Sierra Leone, of course, is one of our neighbors. Um, and we, as we said, there's a number of presidents coming in. So that is um, the president of Sierra Leone, who is just walking in. He's on your screen. That's the Korean, uh, South Korean ambassador, isn't that? By Koroma. President Bai Koroma of Sierra Leone has come in to the Black Star Square. President Bai Karama. We've seen, of course, before him, President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf as well. Okay, you're watching us live on Ghana television and on listening to us on radio and on DSTV 278. This is Ghana television live. And there you have on the screen the very famous Reverend Ousu Bempa, who prophesied uh, that uh, Nanaku Vado will become uh, president. Okay, so this is a special sitting of Parliament at the Independence Square and as we wait for the Speaker of Parliament, the new Speaker of Parliament and the parliamentarians to take their seats so the proceedings can begin, uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, what is going to go on when the Speaker arrives. When the Speaker arrives, Parliament will be brought to order. And after a few introductory words, the speaker will invite the president-elect and the chief justice will swear in the president-elect. Once he's sworn in, he will be given the state sword and he will raise that up to the crowd to signify his acceptance of the position. So wherever you are in this country, we like to say thank you for joining us at the Independence Square for the inauguration of the President-elect Nana Dankwa Akufuado and the Vice President-elect Dr. Mahamadou Baumia. We haven't spoken about their spouses today, but um, obviously... Um, it is the Black Star Square, not Independence Square. We've just been told to be absolutely precise, but well, it on the also program, says Independence, Independence Square. Square. So, so common usage, we are at the Black Star Square slash Independence Square. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Swearing in an inauguration of the fifth president of the fourth republic of Ghana, Nanada Dankwa Ekufuado and his vice president-elect um, Alaji Baumia expected to attend this ceremony shortly. Of course, the president will be accompanied by his wife, Mrs. Rebecca um, Ekufuado. Many people call her Auntie Becky. Can you tell us a little bit about well, her, Well, you're right. She's fondly called Auntie Becky. Mrs. Rebecca Ekufuado belongs to a family with a very rich political history. Uh, she's the second daughter of the former Speaker of Parliament in the Third Republic, Jacob Hackenberg Griffith Randolph. Oh, uh, my God. I believe uh, direct that... Consistent. The president of Mali, the president of Mali is whom you see on your screens currently. President of Mali. Okay, so I was talking about uh, um, Auntie Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Akufuado, and. Um, oh, and of course, Alban Bagben, we've just seen on our screens. Um, 
majority leader. Uh, I think it's easy to call him a veteran, a veteran parliamentarian. He's going to be the second, second deputy, deputy speaker. speaker. Alban Sumane Bagbin is whom we saw. We saw very briefly the president of Mali as he walked in, His Excellency Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. So we've seen Mali, Sierra Leone, we've seen Liberia, we've seen Ethiopia, there are a number of presidents who are either attending or are sending representatives to attend this ceremony. We of course also saw Aliko Dangote, Africa's richest man. Um, Ah, we see um, Professor Dele from uh, the CPP. Professor Dele and Odike, they're in our shots. They're both well known. Kofia Palu, they're well known um, politicians. And obviously, over the last year, unless you've been uh, hiding under a rock, you would have heard and seen their names. Ghana has. Haruna Idrisu, he is now the minority leader in parliament, former minister for of employment as well. He's a member of parliament. He's also um, somebody. He's I think now that the parliamentarians seem to have started taking their seats, we're going to try to bring you as much of the leadership of parliament as possible. Um, we are live from the Black Star slash Independence Square, Ghana Television. We're sitting directly under the arch. Um, huge roar about to come. President Jerry John Rawlings. President, you can hear the roar. Arrives with his wife, Nana Kunedu Ajimang Rawlings. President Rawlings was twice head of state of Ghana. First, military head of state. Second, democratically elected civilian president. He served two terms in office. Constitution, of course, bars him from standing. He anointed his vice president, John Evans Atta Mills, um, to replace him literally as president. This was rejected by Ghanaians, but you can hear the roar again. He is a very colorful um, person. He brings everybody to their feet. People are chanting and waving as he walks in. His wife, Nana Kunedo Achiman Rawlings, obviously you would know her too. She stood as a uh, presidential candidate in the recent election. Yes, indeed. One thing you cannot take away from president, former President Rawlings is his charisma. His charisma. He's so charismatic, he pulls crowd wherever he goes. And there, the former, the former um, um, head, head of state of Nigeria, Olusungun Obasanjo, uh, also in Ghana, and um, with, with Ken Oferiata, formerly of Data Bank, and many people tip to be the minister of finance uh, in, the, in Nanado's government. We'll, we'll wait to see, but that was uh, President Obasanjo. I'm very happy that he's here today because uh, he's one of those who worked tirelessly to bring the MPP back when they came into power in 2000. So it's great to see him here. Uh, he's over 80 years old and he's here today to wish Nanado well. So that's, that's beautiful to see him here.
So we are live from the Black Star Square. Uh, this is the inauguration of Nana Adodankwa Akufo Ado. And very soon, Parliament will be seated. And we are I at the... I'd like to announce of the President of the Republic of Gabon, His Excellency Omar Bongo, His Excellency Ali Odimba Omar Bongo, President of the Republic of Gabon, is here with us. And also, I'd like to acknowledge the presence. of the wife of the former Vice President of the Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Atiku Abubakar, is represented here by his wife, Chief Mrs. Amina Abubakar. And very shortly, the Speaker of Parliament would arrive. After which this entire place will become or converted into Parliament. The processes and procedures of Parliament will take place. And then there will be the final swearing in of the President-elect and his Vice President. The ceremonial ADCs, which happen to be the IGP or the service commanders, they are the ceremonial ADCs and then the president's ADC. So it's quite a long list of, or, of people who will be in that procession. And so as they come up, we will identify who they are to you uh, as we welcome some more dignitaries to the Independence Square here in Accra. There's quite a lot that is happening um, on the ground. We have a number of cameras and so we're bringing you the best of the pictures live on Ghana television from the Black Star Square, also Independence Square, swearing in an inauguration of the fifth president of the Fourth Republic. My name is Nana Yao Furiata. My co-presenters, or I should say commentary, commentary today, provided by Colonel Comfort Ankuma Dansu and John Osei Tutu. To Ajimang, live from the Black Star Square. <laughs> well, one of the unique things of today's ceremony is that the president elect will be accompanied by ceremonial ADCs. And the ceremonial ADCs, as I said earlier, are the service commanders led by the Chief of Defence Staff, Air Vice Marshal. Yes, and the ceremonial ADCs are the Chief of the Defence Staff and the Inspector General of Police. Just the two of them. You learn something new every day, don't absolutely, you? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so <laughs> I think that um, you are seeing live shots from Ghana Television. Um, our director, 
of affairs, Madame Abnan Serge, continues to provide us with information. The ambassador from the United States, Mr. Robert Jackson. Mr. Robert Jackson, ambassador um, of the United States to Ghana. He's one of the many ambassadors who will be making their way to their seats today. As I said, the ceremonial ADCs are the chief of the defense staff and the inspector general of police. They act as ceremonial ADCs during functions to the president. Can I let me ask, what is the significance of the president having ceremonial ADCs? Because he, all, we all know that he already has an ADC who is with him all the time. Why, why do we need these two service personnel? Yes, during his normal routine work and uh, duties, he has a permanent ADC, who is usually in the rank of a colonel, usually. But during functions, when he is sitting in, in state or in parliament house, he has two personnel who are in the person of the chief of the defense staff and the inspector general of police. Okay, so the Chief of Defence Staff, in this case, Air Vice Marshal uh, Samson Oje, uh, uh, who... And the uh, Inspector General of Police, uh, Mr. Kudalo. Mr. Kudalo. They would be the ADCs for, for today. Uh, one thing strikes me, Nanaya, and, and I don't know if you are ready to talk about this, but I can see Kente everywhere. It's just... It's just amazing. The colors. Well, it, it is very distressing, actually, <laughs> that whilst we are allowed to be heard, that we are not to be seen. Because Colonel herself is resplendent in Kente, says Madame, I'm wearing a Kufuahini and you let the side down. Although your tie, my tie I was just going tie. to say that you were rescued <laughs> by your tie. You were wearing, a tie. <laughs> you're wearing a Kente tie. Majority leader is in our shot and at the moment. Well. And the deputy majority leader as well. They're both in our shot very briefly. Um, Honorable Osei Mensa. Che, che Mensa Bonsa. Che Osei. But that tells me that Parliament is here. Is seated. And the deputy, um, his deputy, Member of Parliament, Ajwa Safo. I think she's one of very inspiring young politicians who sort of entered. There are a number of these young uh, members of Parliament, including the daughter, of course, of former President, um, Dr. Zanetu Rawlings, yes. people um, like George Ander, who have injected into, I think, just the political discourse such vim, and it'll be fascinating.